and fast fibers. Not all muscle throughout your body or from body to body to body to body, all right, is going to have the identical functional characteristics. All right, it can change within a person and from person to person. We're going to see that there's a difference in the composition of the fibers. They can have uh, different forms of myosin that will be present. For example, in the slow fibers, we're going to see that they're going to contract slowly, therefore giving them the term slow. Now, these are going to be fibers that can be resistant to fatigue. They're smaller in diameter, they have a very good blood supply, lots of mitochondria, don't fatigue as quickly, and they're going to have a large amount of myoglobin, which is with the blood. Good example, in our postural muscles that we have, we have more of the postural muscles in the lower than the upper limbs because posture is needed. Okay? Now, if you want to have something to kind of compare it to, when you have a chicken, all right, dark meat's going to be in the thighs, the legs, for example, because that's where you're going to have a rich blood supply. That's what makes it darker in the color. Now, if it's a fast fiber, well, these, they contract quickly, but they will fatigue quickly, all right? They get to respond quickly to the nerve stimulation. We're gonna see that the ATP gets used a little more readily. We, got, we don't have as much of a blood supply, not as many mitochondria. A good example, lower limbs of somebody who is a sprinter. Upper limbs of most people. If you think about in the chicken, we're gonna find like the wings and the breast, okay? Be the white meat. It's not as much of a blood supply there, okay? And don't worry too much about this. So when we talk about the fibers of the body, and this could actually be different throughout your body, okay? You might have some areas where we could think of as being fast twitch. For you, they might come a little bit more under slow and vice versa. It's not going to be the same. The distribution, okay, of these fibers, what we're going to see is most muscles are going to have both, but it can actually vary. It can vary based on you. It can vary from person to person to person. Now, exercise will affect the fibers of our muscles. One thing we don't do is we don't increase the number of fibers. What you increase is the size of the muscle. <clears throat> so what gets increased are the myofibrils, the actin and the myosin. When you increase your muscle size, you have hypertrophied your muscle. Hyper too much, okay? So you have hypertrophied your muscle. If you increase that muscle size, you'll increase the nuclei that'll be present. You're going to get an increase in the strength because if you're increasing the size of that muscle, there's better coordination. All right. We can have an increase in metabolic enzymes. We can have better circulation. And because you're usually doing something that's reducing the fat of your body, you have less restriction of the muscle by the fat. So building up of the muscle can be beneficial. There's a difference though in building it up and the people who 
do things to build it up falsely. You know what I mean? The anabolic steroids, for example. Okay? When the muscle decreases in size, well, this one's going to atrophy. So, everything reverses. In some cases, the cell will die altogether. And once a muscle cell is dead, it doesn't come back. All right? There's no reviving it. So, these skeletal muscle fibers, even though they're going to get into type 1, type 2, if you know fast and slow that we have those two types, I'm good. How do you kill a muscle cell? When that muscle cell's proteins, which are making up those myosin and the actin, have to begin to get broken down for energy elsewhere in the body. Make sure you got this up and ready to go in case, oh, yeah. he, in case he comes in. Okay. Yeah, it's still up. I just got my password in. That's all. Oh, okay. Um, if you have to begin to break down that actin and that myosin, that doesn't come back if it goes too far. So if the breaking down of the muscle is used for energy in the body, that's a wasting away of the muscle and it doesn't come back. That muscle cell will be lost forever. Like in severe diets? It, um, Could you do that? Like when yes. you do those high, kind of high protein, low fat, well, or the low ones carb. that'll be high protein, hopefully you're getting enough of the protein that it's not going to actually break down the muscle cell. Hopefully what it'll do is it will break down the fat cells, okay, because you're not given anything to feed or get put into the fat cells, okay? Now, if you take a diet too far, in other words, if you've lost the weight, you know, you've pretty much gotten rid of the fat stores and that sort of thing, and then the body will begin affecting the proteins of the muscle, it can begin to shrink the muscle size. Okay. Now, if you don't let it go too far, you can build it back up. So the rest of this chapter is closing out, looking at the other two muscle types, okay? Oh, I'm sorry the heat production that comes from skeletal muscles. Well, we kind of know that the reason or one of the good things about the heat production in skeletal muscle is it helps to maintain our body temperature, which is helping to maintain homeostasis of the body. The, the closing out, the other two types of muscle, smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, not going to get really detailed about this, okay? Because we're going to come back to this in part two. Smooth muscle, the ones that we think of in the viscera of the body, the organs of the body, we don't have it striated, okay? Fibers are definitely smaller. They're spindle shaped. They're all single, have their own nucleus. We have more actin than myosin. We're going to have some indentations on that plasma membrane, caviole, think of a cave, okay, indentation. Those are going to act a little bit, or they think they might act a little bit like the T tubules. Do you remember how the T tubules got to pass the um, action potential across that muscle, okay, across the, the muscle fiber? We're going to have dense bodies instead of Z discs. We're going to need calcium, okay? But this time, remember how calcium was binding to the troponin? This time it'll bind to something called calmodulin. We do get cross bridging. We do have to have relaxation. Do you guys remember looking at smooth muscle under the scope and it looked like a spindle? All right. Now, just kind of follow me. I, like I said, I'm not going to ask you to get into detail. All right? Kind of follow me on the similarities in structure and how it's going to work. Looks like a fishnet, right? All right? See how we've got all 
of these little dense bodies that are present. In this fishnet appearance that we see, do you notice how they're trying to show us the actin and the myosin going from one dense body to the next? All right. If we think about the viscera of the body, stomach, intestines, if we take in a food source, all right, that food source will propel through these viscera, right? Now watch the action that can happen with the smooth muscle cell. The smooth muscle cell can fishnet tightens, releases, contract, relax. So this time, that actin and that myosin, they still slide over each other, but what happens is they pull those dense bodies, that kind of contracts the uh, smooth muscle cell, and then it will relax, and whatever it has in it got to go whoosh, to the next section, where that section will contract, relax, and it will propel further. Contract, relax, contract, relax, contract, relax. What do you mean what it, what it has in it? Okay, if we think about our stomach going into the intestines, you've got that, that food product, okay? So the stomach will take it, will break it down, will go into the intestines, but it has to move through whatever, you know, it has to move through that 20 some odd feet of the small intestines, okay, before it's gonna hit the colon, okay, and then be expelled out the body, right? So that piece that got formed has to get propelled. And so that contraction, relaxation, it gets to propel the pieces forward. That's what smooth muscle does. If you think about the urine that gets created by the kidneys, the ureters are smooth muscle, okay? Those ureters, the urine is going to come from the kidney into those ureters, and it's got to make it to the bladder, okay? And it's going to do that by that, um, that ureter, ureter tube doing this number. And the urine gets to go from this moving, this moving, this moving, this moving. Okay, so that's the smooth muscle. When you get like <coughs> stomach cramps, is, is it because like it doesn't? I mean, it doesn't relax; it just contracts. The smooth um. Muscle. Let me look that up. 